Okay, so we're going to make a cone, but what's wrong with the one that Blender gives you? Well, let's take a look. Let's go to the Add menu and Mesh and Cone. And there it is. Let's take a look in Edit Mode. It's uh, It's got this one point at the top and all of these triangles. The bottom face is an end gone, and then that makes all of these triangles connected to the top point. It looks like a cone, but it's a bit of a mess as a subdivision surface. Let's add a subdivision surface modifier to it, and we end up with this. It doesn't look anything like a cone. Set it to smooth shading. And that doesn't help. We'd have all sorts of problems with this. We're going to have to start from scratch. And we can do that by going to the Add menu and adding a mesh cube. Now the first thing we need to think about is that the base needs to have at least eight vertices. So we're going to add some loop cuts across the uh, top and bottom in both directions. We don't need to add one around the middle. We'll do that later when we have more of a cone shape. Now we have these four faces around the bottom, but we want the vertices that make them up to be uh, more circular. So if we select all four of those faces, we can go to the end panel and uh, use one of our loop tools, the add-on that we installed earlier. If we go to the edit tab and open up the loop tools menu, we'll see all of these operations we can now perform. And the one we want is circle. And if we click that, we'll see that the vertices that make up the base of our cone will turn into a circle. And add vertices is just the right amount to make a perfect circle. Now you'll notice at the bottom here that we have these three spoked poles. And uh, as with the cylinder, we want to push those away from the edge. We can't have those on a corner. So as with the cylinder, we can inset this bottom set of faces. And as before, I like to start with 0.1, just to inset them 10% of the way. It's always a good place to start when thinking about curvature. And then again, I'm going to inset them 0.5 just to push them away from the edge and give us a good range to slide our control loop between. Now if we add a subdivision surface modifier with a level of 3 just by pressing control 3 and set that to shared smooth we can see we have this nice circular base now for our cone. We just got to deal with the top section now to make it more like a cone. So we can do that by selecting these top four faces and with uh, median points selected as the transform pivot scale them to zero. Now that's looking much better this looks like a cone. But we do have this impossibly sharp point at the very top of the cone and the sides are made from triangles so that's something we're going to have to fix. So first of all we're going to add some control loops with control R uh, along the cross section of the cone. Three loops will be perfect. The top one is going to control the pointiness of the top of the cone. The second one is, is just a holding loop really and the bottom one will help to control the curvature around the bottom of the cone. Now the reason the top of the cone is very very sharp is because there are actually eight points here pulling up the geometry towards the top. The eight points that made up the, the top that we scaled to zero. They're having a huge influence over the geometry as the subdivision surface modifier sees it. So we have to merge them so that they're just one vertex. The easiest way to do that is to select everything in edit mode and then go to mesh, clean up, merge by distance. And we can see straight away that the curve over the top of our cone is much, much smoother. But if we zoom in to the very top of the cone and change that to flat shading, we'll see that we still have one point at the top created by the subdivision surface modifier, which is connected to way too many faces. And that's because these sides here are triangles and we need them to be quads. We don't want any poles with more than five edges coming out of them. And this one at the top has eight. That's no good. Now, before we get rid of any edges in order to make those faces quads, we want to select this top control loop and assign it to a new vertex group. If you press Alt and G, this menu will come up, select the only option that we have. And now in the properties panel over here, select the green mesh icon and we'll see that in vertex groups, we have a new group of points which represent our control loop. We can rename this to point sharpness because that's what it controls. Now any point, if we don't have anything selected, we can come back to this panel and with the point sharpness vertex group selected, we can click the select button and it will choose them all for us. And let's use the mark seam functionality in order to highlight that this is one of our control loops. Now we can convert these triangles at the tops to quads by deleting every other edge between two triangles. Now we can shift click them all until we have four evenly spaced edges selected. And if we press X and dissolve edges, Blender will get rid of those edges, leaving four quads at the very top of our cone. And if we look over the top of our model now in flat shading, we can see we have a very smooth arrangement of quads that make up the curvature at the top of our cone. But now we see if we try to alt and click this loop at the top, it's no longer a loop which goes all of the way around the top of the cone. It's actually made up of four separate partial loops. But because we have our vertex group, we can just go over to the panel, click select, and the whole loop will be selected for us. And now we can press GG to slide it along those edges so we can decide just how sharp we want the point of our cone to be. 
Now this second loop is just a holding loop, but I generally like to slide it a little closer to the top, near our control loop. The bottom loop helps to control the curvature over the base of our cone. So let's use the mark seam functionality again to highlight that this is a control loop. And the same with this first loop around the bottom, another control loop to help control the curvature over the base of the cone. Again, let's mark that as a seam so that we can see that this is another control loop. And now we have all the control you could really expect for a cone. It's made from all quads. Let's change it to smooth shading and see what we have. And it's good, this cone is now suitable as a subdivision surface model. We can go over and change the viewport shading. Let's choose one of the matte caps. The red one is always a fairly good test. And we'll see that that point of light flows really nicely over the surface of our cone, as you would expect it to in real life. And the same over the bottom of our cone. So there we have it, a fully controllable cone in Blender. Next we're going to look at a few different ways to handle the cube.